Oh. Okie dokie. Are we virtuously caring or just anxious again? Eh, forthcoming in Behavioral and Brain Science by Charlie Kurth. Because <laughs> I'm going to cut what I just said out of the, uh, the VOD. <laughs> and, and YouTube, as usual, you can watch this on uh, Twitch Live and you'll get more flavor. <laughs> okay, Grossman's paper posits a novel virtuous caring cycle on which the increased care that is received by more fearful children begets increased cooperative tendencies cooperate cooperate tendencies in those children so i mean okay if you are caring for kids who are afraid they will start to increase cooperation interesting might might expect it maybe not while this proposal is insightful in many ways, it may overlook an alternative and potentially complementary explanation of the unique level of cooperativeness that we find in humans. And it's interesting because we just came from a paper that said people will inherently cooperate at the children level. People will inherently care for each other. Okay, more specifically, for all that's been said, anxiety remains an equally plausible driver of the ontogenetic changes that Grossman's proposal aims to explain. Okay, so we're saying instead of people inherently um, being like wanting to care for each other, people are inherently nervous and trying to fix the world. <laughs> Different way of looking at it. Like it's a good contrast from the last paper where we're saying we are inherently social things where that's fundamental now we're again now we're inherently nervous things that are trying to like you know adjust the starting place for an anxiety focused alternative is the observation that human social life is structured by norms whose complexity and vagueness often leaves individuals uncertain about how they ought to behave Anxiety as an emotion triggered by problematic uncertainty of the sort would then be a predictable and prudent response Well, disagree with what anxiety is doing what what do you disagree with now? Vipers. All right. More specifically, we should expect that though the course of human, that through the, no, though the course of history, there was a tendency for individuals to experience in increased anxiety as they struggle to navigate these complex, uncertain social norms. You disagree that we are inherently pro-social? Okay. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> the last paper said we were inherently social. This person's saying we're inherently anxious. <laughs> I don't know who to believe. I'd say we are, we definitely are social things. I mean, are you disagreeing? Yeah, I don't know. Like, tell me more specifically. Um, we're inherently, so we definitely need to live in societies, one way or the other. How that works out, I guess, is the disagreement between this author and the other ones. Up, up, up. Boom! Involve yourself. What's up, man? Welcome back. Yeah, I'm having a, long, a slightly longer stream, and I see. <laughs> Thank you for the raid. Thank you for the raid. Um, Sour Stash, welcome in. How you doing? Thank you for the raid. Involve yourself. I mean, what else can you say? I was giving him a shout out earlier. I'm gonna give him a shout out now. Yeah, so if you don't know Evolve Yourself, oh yeah, should have given uh, uh, Evil Lazi a shout out. That never worked. But yeah, go click on the uh, link at the top. I'm sorry, Evil Lazi, if you're still around. But uh, yeah, my complete, my shout out was busted. So yeah. Okay, yeah, so we're just talking about are people social? Are they not social? I just read a paper arguing that people are inherently social. And now we got a paper that people are not inherently social. Vipers is saying the most violent de demographic is toddlers. They can't do damage, but they have no impulse control. They lash out not caring about the consequences. We only become less shitty through a process of socialization. Yeah, that's fair. Toddlers are maniacs. Um, the previous author cited research that said that people inherently respond to caring with care too. So even very little kids will, if you give them care, they will respond in a certain caring way. Now, that once they hit toddlers is like, yeah, I know that's gone. I know it's gone. And people take a long time to not be shitty people because kids, I don't like kids. Like kids are kind of terrible quite often. And so this is the thing. And so this author, you know, is saying anxiety and like, you know, this sort of like craziness trying to get, figure out the world is really what we are more specifically like. But then we have to like, you know, as you, as a viper is saying, 
through the process of socialization, we become, we understand how to actually uh, do stuff without being assholes. <coughs> so this is what we're talking about. Uh, Involve Yourself TV Peoples. If anyone doesn't know Involve Yourself, he does, um, once you can throw the other link down, this one, he does, he's a mind metaphysician, philosopher of science. Also, he's also an everyday chess well, he makes money teaching chess out in Chicago, but his stream is mostly about meditation, holistic pr approach to things. Definitely, um, like, if you want, like, a more rounded approach to the world than I present, where you can talk about philosophy, but you can also talk about your body and your relationship, gaming and, like, uh, like chess and things like that, strategy. He reads, like, the Tao Te Ching on his uh, channel. Go check out uh, our buddy Evolve Yourself. <coughs> but, yeah. So, yeah, but, like, are we actually pro-social? Like, involve yourself. You might actually have an opinion on this. Are we inherently social or, or are we inherently, uh... <laughs> do we have to learn that? And that's what society and culture gives us. Yeah. So, what makes us, like, are, are we struggling to become nice, socialized people? Or are we inherently socialized people? Yeah, the author says we're struggling to do it. They say, moreover, this anxiety would have brought the emotions characteristic response, increased risk assessment and risk minimization behaviors. Yeah, so if you're nervous, what do you do? You start understanding the risks of being an asshole and you, then you minimize them by being socialized. You realize socialization is a risk minimization behavior. Like that is, that may be all that socialization is, is minimizing the damage you're going to do to yourself by being an asshole in social society. <clears throat> in the context of alloparenting, when these anxiety-driven behaviors were experienced by children, they would likely have manifested, for example, as cautious approach, reassurance-seeking, and greater deference towards authority figures, behaviors, that is, that could have worked to enhance the cooperative tendencies of children, especially in the more anxious ones. Viper says, ask the same question about a different species. Are tigers inherently nice, or is there an emergent behavior from tiger society? Um... I mean, in tiger society, they might be super nice to each other. Like, tiger parents might love their kids and, like, they might all be caring and stuff. Um, or they might just be trying to figure out how to kill more antelope or whatever it is that tigers eat. I'm actually not sure. That I, I'm thinking you could rephrase it um, that within tigers, from the perspective of tigers, they are inherently nice. Like, that is what it is to be a nice tiger is for what the tigers do. But, like, you're talking about from the tiger's perspective, are other tigers nice? And I think the answer is going to be, like, in terms of, like, a tiger family is, like, probably they think they're good parents and very nice. So, um, yeah. I, I think it's a very hard question because you just asked something from the tiger's perspective. Not what we're projecting onto them. And, like, that is actually really difficult. The beast within us all. See, there we go. Like... What are we actually talking about here? Are we, uh, like, is this like our animal side or are other animals actually also social from their perspective super nice? So the individualist perspective, which this author here is putting out, might not really be the way we are. Like the other, the previous paper we just read was about that we live in societies. That's fundamental to us. Or is it the more individualist approach? Evolve Yourself says, in Evolve Yourself's opinion, the amount of socialization is a spectrum based that is some of us very much so. Some of us are not social beings. It seems weird to categorize all humans as social. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, the, again, like the previous art, uh, author would say, no, we are social and it's sort of deviant to be all by yourself. But uh, they had they had to explain that away, really. They did some work to explain what it is to... Uh, be social like when you're still really alone like as a religious connection say but uh, yeah that's that's you know a good a great point that there's going to be a, a range of socialization or how much uh interaction people want with other uh people viper says it was a facetious question but we could surely study social and solitary species and extract behavioral tendencies from that yeah but see the facetious questions are also very interesting <laughs> Yeah, but there's, the real problem I was pointing out was that we can't look at things from like the um, we're only going to project what we already think a lot of times onto the uh, tigers. 
And so I'm thinking is just going to be replicating everything we're thinking anyway. And so we have to make, we have to understand this better. Like we have to get straight on what we think first of all. And then maybe we can then try to see something from the tiger's perspective or then project less on of what we are thinking onto the tigers. Sourstash says, naturally, I would say it's important to be social. This is how we get far in benefit. I think that's what this author is kind of uh, putting out there that like it's a risk minimization and risk assessment saying like, this is how we, uh, learn to deal with the world the other person was saying no it's fundamental that we're social and that we have to uh we have to do this it's not a reaction it's fundamental to us um but like is it important or is it fundamental is the question is now sour says you can see when someone lacks social skills to a certain extent animals are valuable when solo well some are some need like dogs they need to live in groups like so some are social more like us and some and you can see when someone lacks social skills too we medicalize this sometimes we like say people have like you know problems like social anxiety disorder um i don't know if that's the right approach but we definitely medicalize that and so that's part of it uh philosophers say tiger dick move is not necessarily monkey dick move yes it's a very uh philosopher say thing um yeah now it's on the range point from a uh, evolve yourself like it's definitely someone lacks social still skills versus someone who has it um so it's like i've gotten better with my social skills over time i used to lack it now i'm better than i it used to be um so it's like yes um but like i was never like super terrible but like <clears throat> Yeah, I guess maybe I was, but like I, I was, I was like never, I don't think terrible. I was okay when I was younger, it was just worse. Um, so it's like, did I learn that as a risk minimization behavior or how to get along? Or did I just understand things better over time when I, you know, I understood what was happening. Is that risk assessment? Is that a reaction or was it just that, you know, life is complicated and society is complicated and people are complicated and it wasn't what I was understanding at the time. I think it's more long. I understood more about what was going on. I wasn't trying to, maybe I was, uh, prompted to try to understand, to like understand what was going on as a, uh, you know, risk minimization or like a benefit sort of thing. But, um, it's hard to say actually, like who cares what the cause was because like if maybe I just had to, you know, pick up on this stuff, but like that doesn't mean it's not any less fundamental. Just because I was better, uh, less good at understanding it. So it's like, you know, it's, and I know a whole bunch of people out there um, are, you know, they're really terrible at like picking up on social cues. And so it's like, they have to work very hard. And it's like, it's sort of unfair that, you know, why should they have to work twice as hard at what some people, you know, come easy to them. But again, the flip side is perhaps they're better at other things that other people are not. It's just, you know, society set it up in a certain way and it makes life a lot harder for certain classes of people. Not great, but we have to work to fix this. But again, what's the cause here? What's fundamental? I don't know. We, we've got an argument, though, here between this author and the other one. And I'm not sure we're going to, like, be able to... Un there might be more than one... Like, this might not be easily solvable. It's not like we're going to say one way is easy one way is uh the right way he might just be able to say that you prefer looking at it in a certain way it's the old uh half glass is half empty glass is half full yeah subjective currently because basically the people who are going to say look we're all sort of like in our own heads and you have to like learn this as a reaction that's like the half empty it's like we're, we're there is no like fundamental thing here we're just trying to figure it out the half full people says no look we're just kind of um yeah, good point. And it presumes there's normal and ignores neurodivergence. Yeah, I think this is part of the thing. It's like there's going to be like this goes to what Evolve Yourself said, really. There's going to be a range. And saying like one is the right way is not going to like we don't have the concepts right here. Like these like saying it's a reaction or it's fundamental is like it's sort of I don't know if we've got the right concepts for what's going on all the time. Like these might be overly simplistic. So this is what I, but like, this is just an interesting, like sort of thing that we just had a paper saying that it's 100% like fundamental to be social. Now this one is saying, no, it's reactionary. I don't know. Yeah. 
it's all yeah it's like it's gonna be subjective there's gonna be different kinds of people and the idea that like one way is like like a certain level of being social is uh fundamental is like probably just not accurate to what people are like is that people are more complicated than this yeah Author says, in the case of allo parenting, when these anxiety-driven behaviors were experienced by children, they would likely have manifested, for example, as cautious approach, reassurance-seeking, and greater deference toward authority figures, behaviors, that is, that could have worked to enhance cooperative tendencies of children, especially in the more anxious ones. You see, that's a weird thing to do. It's like, it's assuming that this is the outcome of, like, anxiety, too. I don't really like this. This is a little bit more uh, making stuff up of, like, what anxiety could do in children without actually having done any studies. But the the thing there's like both people are sort of pushing their ideas um and saying and making up a story about how people are here i'm not 100 percent uh sold on this at all like i'm more worried about both approaches now i like the previous one like you we cannot get away uh we cannot really live alone we can't and so there is something social about us now the question is why is anxiety going to do it? I think this is this one here, this paper. This is hand waving. This is just saying it could also be anxiety. That's nice, but they have not actually uh, given enough of a uh, theory of this. So, like, there's no like inherent. Why is anxiety fundamental for that reason either? Like, why for that matter? Like, why should anxiety be fundamental? I mean, this person is just a nervous person, maybe. All right, so contra Grossman's picture, these enhanced cooperative tendencies would not be the upshot of a virtual caring cycle. Rather, they would be the upshot of anxiety. But like, as I'm saying, who the fuck, what fucking theory of anxiety do you have here? Like, I don't know. They're probably just some sort of like hand wavy, oh, this is what it is to be rational to like uh, look at your different options. But there's no reason why this is, should be called anxiety as opposed to something else. Like, why isn't that just what it is to be cooperative to try to navigate the social uh, sphere? That may not be anxiety. I mean, just making up, like, whatever anxiety is. I don't know. All right. To draw up the plausibility of this alternative explanation, we can move in two steps. First, notice that there's an important ambiguity in Grossman's rendering of the fear, like quote-unquote fear, that he takes to underwrite the virtuous caring cycle. In particular, his distinction between general fear and the distinct fearful of social animals, fearfulness of social animals, mirrors the state... Oh, excuse me. Mirrors the standard way that fear and anxiety are often distinguished in emotional in emotion science. Fear engages a fight, flight, freeze response in the face of imminent dangers, while anxiety prompts cautious approach in the face of uncertain threats. Okay. Um, so the author here is apparently referring to like a distinction in emotion science. So there's fear and anxiety. So anxiety re means you just like review your your review your options as opposed to just jumping into uh like uh fight, flight, freeze. Okay, but while this common understanding of anxiety is functionally similar to Grossman's notion of the fearfulness of social animals, the two responses are underwritten by distinct motivation, by distinct motivations, risk assessment, minimization motiva motives, in this case anxiety, care, affiliation, seeking for Grossman's fearfulness. Recognizing this, su recognizing this suggests that two different mechanisms may underlie the enhanced cooperation seen in fearful children. Okay. So this author did something interesting. What they did was they, they read back into the Grossman's original paper uh, an ambiguity that Grossman ignored. And now they're saying, look, it was ambiguous, the kind of fearfulness Grossman was talking about. And they're saying it could have been the other option. Okay, this is less bad than I was uh, criticizing it for it earlier. Because if this was anxiety was already there, then they can just say, look, there's an ambiguity in the account. That, and that's all they're doing. I still think it's... Yeah, it's less bad. I didn't say it was good yet. <laughs> Second, much of the evidence that Grossman marshals in defense of his virtuous cycle, care, caring cycle, is compatible with the anxiety-focused alternative, thus frustrating our ability to determine which of these two mechanisms or both underlies humans' distinctive tendency toward cooperation. Three examples will help draw this out. All right, so remember, we're only getting down to one more page. One, the paper makes extensive appeal to research using emotional facial expressions, and it does this both as a way of measuring relative 
relative fearfulness levels and as a way of inducing fear so that the resulting neurochemical changes and behaviors, for example, cooperativeness, can be assessed. But using emotional facial expressions in these ways is highly controversial. Moreover, even if we set these general worries aside, a deeper, a deeper problem remains. In Grossman's use of this research, what counts as a fearful facial expression is understood so broadly that we cannot say which emotion is actually in play. For instance, in some of Grossman's appeals to the facial expression research, fear is understood expansively so as to include general distress displays. Moreover, where a more narrow rendering is sought by way of contrasting fearful fa faces with other negative emotional facial expressions, the work typically just compares fear and anger faces. Thus, we do not have evidence that allows us to tease apart our competing fear and anxiety-based hypotheses. In fact, to the extent that these experiments that Grossman's arguments builds from makes use of just still images, thus leaving test participants without contextual clues about what the emotional expression is a response to, they're arguably more likely to cue anxiety, a sensitivity to uncertain threats, than fear, a sensitivity to imminent dangers. I was with the author this whole fucking time until his last sentence. There is no way that this author just did what Gro he's criticizing Grossman for in saying what the um, test participants thought when looking at pictures. They just made the same thing. Mistake. They're criticizing the uh, pictures for being still images, and then they're saying, well... <laughs> they're saying it could have been more anxiety than like the other thing because of the still images that's stupid <laughs> it's like come on man you had me up until the last sentence all they had to do was leave off this last sentence and it would have been fine that the test participants couldn't possibly have made the distinction and then they had to go say more likely to cue anxiety they're full like this author's uh annoying me I don't disagree with like that they're saying if there's an ambiguity that was un, uh, un like unanalyzed, then Grossman has a problem. But you can't argue the same point here. Like you can't do the exact same thing in the fucking paragraph. <laughs> Two. All right. The article points to imaging work indicating that neural structures like the amygdala and uh, striatum are engaged in fear responses. But since these structures have also been shown to be engaged as part of anxiety responses, we do not have findings that provide unique support for Grossman's fearfulness model. Similarly, the paper cites the longitudinal study of Tulare et al. 2020 in support of the amygdala's role in the development of development of fear biases, but it's unclear how much support this this work provides for favoring a fear-based mechanism since Tulare study did not test for activity in the anxiety brain regions like the base nucleus of the stria terminalis. Okay, yeah, so basically saying some of the, if you're not, the studies don't distinguish between the two things that we need to distinguish between, you can't use them because you have no base case. That's fair. Three, the research of Grossman cites in support of a connection between fear detection and increased cooperation also fails to be dispositive. Much of this work implicates not just fear and its neural correlates, but also anxiety and its neural correlates. In sum, Grossman is correct to focus on the role that affect that effective traits might play in fostering cooperation, and in looking beyond the usual suspects like empathy, his work advances our understanding of the complex mechanisms that are likely to underlie these ontogenetic changes. That said, it appears that he has not yet succeeded in identifying a virtuous cycle of caring as a central driver of the enhanced cooperation that we see in fearful children. Okay, so this one could have been good. Um, the real question is how much of this... Uh, this distinction actually exists in the real paper. Has this person just made up this distinction and, you know, read back in what they want to call anxiety into the original work? They may have done that here. I don't know. You'd have to read up on this literature. But the problem is they didn't argue for it very well. They, they knocked out some of the support, but the major argument here that they put the most time into, they fucked up in the end. Now, it might still hold, but they misargued for it. Um, so this is just an instructive, you know, I don't hate this. We were just discussing five minutes ago how, you know, finding an alternative story for the uh, cooperation might be the right thing. It might not be that we're inherently social cooperative things. It might That might be a reaction to, you know, risk assessment that we have to figure out how to work with each other because we are not inherently social. And we were just talking about that. So this is a, like an interesting take uh, comparison to the previous paper here. But like, you know, you got to be a bit more careful when you're arguing, but this is okay. Like it's 
it's basically all right. Like, I agree. Did they read too much back into it? I don't know. You have to not fuck up your argument right here, but the other ones, these other arguments right here, you know, they might be okay. So, like, this stuff down here, that's all right. Involve Yourself says, Throughout history, people have made what I consider gross generalizations about the human species. For instance, people, well, that is, people are X, Y, and Z. Obviously, in some situations, that carves nature at its joints. However, when discussing mental emotional states, it seems absurd to just lump everyone together as all having or not having X. Yeah, and I think it was really appreciated what you said earlier, that there is going to be... Um, you know, levels or p differences among people and how much everyone is social uh, inherently. And uh, that every time AJT farms, well, welcome in, welcome in. Yeah, um, that like there's going to be differences among people and the idea that everyone has or does not have it. Like the idea that everyone has this anxiety is wrong also. Like there would have to be gradations to that too. And I'm not sure I understand what they said about the um, their theory of anxiety. Um, Vipers, I don't have the D, or at least it's very little. Okay. Um. <laughs> there's no D in your, there's a D in your name. <laughs> it says gratitude. <sighs> don't know what the D refers to. I'm, I'm losing my mind at this point. Three hours of uh, reading philosophy and bullshitting. Sorry. But yeah. Okay. But that's basically it. We got some, like, better analysis from our buddy Evolve Yourself. Brought in the uh, actual arguments. I'm just bullshitting at this point. But, like, yeah. This is the thing. What does it mean to be... Uh, what is their theory of anxiety? What is the theory of cooperation here? And until you straighten this out, and again, it's going to be real hard as Evolve Yourself was illustrating, both because people are... There's going to be a range of people who can handle things at different levels or like or socialize at different levels. And then that would the same thing would apply to anxiety, how anxious people actually are and how does that manifest. We don't have answers to any of these things. And so the idea that like they were this is the right way of looking at it is I think as I was saying earlier um yeah oh evolve yourself I mean uh vipers were you just making a joke about a b c and the d when evolve yourself was saying x y and z so you just don't you just didn't get to d damn it I'm sorry should have got that one yep this is what happens. All right. So that means it's